Hey everybody, welcome again this week to the ATR podcast. You know who I am, the always camera ready and sometimes uh, not best dressed. I'm wearing a golf shirt today. Uh, live over par, by the way. And uh, I am, of course, Mark Williams, your host. I am joined by the head of the Adam Norris, uh, sorry, the Adam Fox for Norris campaign, Mr. John Fulkowski. Uh, that needs to be changed to the Adam Fox won the Norris campaign. Darn right. Darn right he did. And you know what? He, he certainly earned it this year. Uh, hopefully it's the first of many for Adam Fox. And, of course, uh, he's always, he's already on the phone right now. The man who's working the phone is trying to move Nick Letty's contract so the Islanders can sign more players, Mr. Anthony Loraco. Yeah, you know, I think um, I think with today's news of Prize getting buying out, uh, Islander fans can start stitching the name on the jersey because it's 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 definitely going to happen. And you know what? That's some of the breaking news we're going to go go through later. Uh, we know that there's a press conference in Nashville. Did we ever find out uh, what happened with that? Because that was that happened when I was setting up. Uh, Pecorino retired. Yeah. yeah. All right, Pecorino retired. Okay. So. There is still a lot to get to. We have a jam-packed show today. We have even a special guest, Mr. Dave Pagnota from the fourth period. Um, and after all, if you were listening to NHL Network on Sirius XM yesterday, you couldn't miss him. And he did a great job. I am adding into the stream, Mr. Dave Pagnota. Hi, Dave. How you doing? How's it going, gentlemen? Great. Uh, I was actually just mentioned how uh, I was listening to you twice on NHL Network yesterday. Your first interview uh, on the power play, and then also on the drive home around 4 a.m. But you know, <laughs> Is it too much. You're not sick of me yet, or what? Uh, no, we we love to talk hockey, so <laughs> I'll even do that with the recording. Um, <laughs> Zig is on us with it with us right now. All right. Um. Anybody want to take a first the first question? Yeah. So Dave, first, thanks for always uh, calming my nerves about the aisles and talking me off the ledge every now. And then. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll start there. So with the news of Parise and Suda getting bought out, uh, yeah. I know we kind of connect the dots in the past with Parise and Lou Lamorello. Um, how likely is it that he signs with the Islanders come July twenty eighth? Um. I'll, I'll I'll word it by saying I think it's likely that the Islanders pursue him. Uh, whether he, he goes there or gets a better offer somewhere else or whatnot, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I would be shocked if the Islanders do not pursue him. I think that's in the plan right now, um, and we'll see come the 28th. But uh, I, it, all, it all looks like like they'll table him some kind of offer um, and then kind of go from there. But if, if all things are considered – uh, I would suspect that it, it's definitely a point of interest for him. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how these fall. But yeah, definitely the Islanders will be part of that mix. Okay, Dave. Minnesota now has about I would say twenty six, twenty seven million in cap space. Do you believe this would be kind of like an expansion precursor, or possibly a precursor to say a, maybe a Jack Eichel trade? Because that opens up a ton of space. For it it opens up yeah ten point three million. For this coming season, the problem is the cap numbers jump to 6.3 in the second year of this off uh, of this buyout, and then 7.3 in years three and four, and then it dips. So if you're bringing in Eichel, you know it works next season, uh, but the next three years after that are cap hell. And if you're going to re-sign Kaprizov, if you know, you, you've got a couple other guys that they got Fiala needs a new deal. You got a whole, you know, figure out some other holes in your roster. Um, I think this is this was made in part with the expansion draft so they can protect other pieces. Uh, but I don't think this this means that okay, now we're going to get Jack because we've got the space next season. It's the three years after that are the big concern because it almost evens out. Like they save, I, I don't even know if they save a million bucks in in the third or fourth year of that buyout. So. Um, I, I, does it change things? Maybe it makes things a little bit easier if they can move out other pieces. Uh, but the way it currently is structured, uh, I don't think they're going to all of a sudden get Jack Eichel unless there's other elements that are going out, like you know Matt Dumba, uh, that's still out there from a trade rumor perspective. 
Dave, um, one of the questions that I asked last week was that uh, the Seth Jones trade was going to shift the balance of power a little bit more than, say, a Jack Eichel trade. Is there anybody else that can be like these tectonic plates that are moving around? Steven Stamkos. Um, uh, see, that, that was my reaction, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's there's going to be a conversation there. Now, whether it, it evolves, I, I'm not sure. He's got an $8.5 million cap hit. But they had discussions last offseason. They spoke to his camp about it. There was some willingness to explore some options. Uh, my understanding is that's going to be the case if they haven't already had that discussion that they will this week. Um, I had the parade yesterday and everyone was, you know, having a good time over the weekend. So I get it. <laughs> but um, if, if it hasn't happened already, it's going to happen this week. And, and then they'll determine which way they want to go. But we're probably going to hear a little bit more about Stan Coast's name out there in, in the coming days. I know Kucherov had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. I love it. I would be right there with him if I was there. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of people say like personalities in hockey aren't there, so it's refreshing to see something like that happen. It really is. Right. Um, right. Exactly. I loved it. I loved it. The 18 million over the cap <laughs> stuff yeah. and everything. That was that was great. And it's, <laughs> by the way, that's that wasn't a shot at the league. Yeah. That's a shot at everybody complaining that they were 18 million over. Like Dougie, Dougie Hamilton's comment after uh, right. Carolina. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I personally, yeah. I'm personally a fan. I, I mean, my intro's in here and Bob Macho Man Randy Savage. So I love embracing the inner heel and how Nikita Kucherov is kind of playing the villain, if you will. I think it's great. I think it's great for the sport. Oh, yeah. No, we need more of this. Absolutely. The, the, the sport needs more of it everywhere. And uh, I, you know, we're starting to see people be more comfortable um, doing it. Now, you got to pick your timing. If he did something like this in like the third round, oops. But <laughs> yeah. this was yeah. Yeah, this was all right right now. Now, Dave, the, the other big name that's out there is Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, are the Blues looking to trade him before the seventeenth when the lists are due, uh, or is it probably going to be a deal that happens after the expansion draft? Uh, they're not um, against or in favor of either direction. Um, you know, if they get a deal done before the expansion draft, cool. If it's afterwards, they're fine with it too. There, there's not a, uh, a set deadline or or a mandate that it has to happen before the expansion draft. But it's going to be similar to what we saw in terms of Duncan Keith. Not the return, but in a sense that you're going to get a player that you're going to have to protect anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, it, it, it's, it's not like an Eichel deal, for example, where it's multiple pieces and you might have to worry about who you're going to protect after and things like that if you're Buffalo. Uh, this one's probably, you know, one pricey asset coming back. So you have to decide if you want to protect them or not. So for, for St. Louis, it doesn't matter uh, whether it happens this week or, you know, starting the 22nd and on. Uh, they're, they're fine. They're fine with it, you know, really either way. I know. What are the, the two New York teams stand in these talks? I know they've both been mentioned as suitors for Tarasenko. Yeah, Islanders are still definitely in the mix um, on that one. I don't see the Rangers really getting in there. I, I don't see how it makes any sense for them, quite frankly. Thank you for calming me down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, every team has asked St. Louis to retain money, so oh. I don't. I don't see them retaining half. Uh, maybe it's a million bucks. Maybe it's one five at most. Is is what my gut would suggest. But even still, at six million bucks, I just don't see how the Rangers would accommodate that, even if they're sending out money, even if it's an even swap. Because uh, then you're moving out probably a player that's probably better. Like, Bushnevich isn't going for Vladdy Tarasenko. Mm -hmm. So I would be surprised if it's if it's there. I think you're going to see some teams poking around. I mean, obviously, they've had a conversation with, Saint, uh, with, with Seattle. Um, you know, I would imagine to a certain extent teams like Calgary and Edmonton just to see how much they can finagle the cap if it's, you know, if it's whatever the half is, it's seven and a, three, seven, five million bucks for Tarasenko. You're probably taking that chance, um, but you know, I, 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 I just don't see how the Rangers make much sense in in that one. Um, the Islanders, if they do do it, you're probably looking at Jordan Everly going the other way um, as as part of the deal, and there would be more to it if if it actually comes to fruition. Does he make sense to the Islanders? Yeah, I think it changes scenery. Um, you know, you, you've you've you're bringing in a guy that wants to, well, definitely wants to change the scenery. That's that's 100%. Um, 
you know, you're going to get probably a pretty motivated player to not only get a new opportunity, but an environment that is in contender status, like cup contender status. So the Islanders are certainly going to work towards that this this offseason to solidify themselves as a cup contender. I think he's more he's certainly more dynamic than a Jordan Eberle. Um, and with Lee coming back, you know, if you're swapping him out and you're having a first line of Lee Barzell and, and Tarasenko, it gives you a little bit more options and it also creates, if he's healthy, uh, a lot more trouble for, for the other team in terms of how they're going to defend it. Dave, with, what's the uh, the latest? Because uh, we got to talk about him because you know it's always going to come to it right now in this part of the offseason. What's the latest on Jack Eichel? Yeah. Um, it, well, everybody understands, all the teams involved understand what the options are from a, from a health perspective in terms of surgery and all that. So that's been clear. Um, you know, from the get-go. Now it's just a matter of, you know, who's going to pay up. And, you know, Buffalo's holding firm. They're not, you know, yes, they want to move him. Yes, they want to kind of swap him out. But you know, at the same time, they want to make sure they max their value. Um, so whether it's, you know, uh, the, the Chicago or Boston or Vegas or, you know, some of these teams that are out there, Anaheim and L.A., have made it clear they're not trading their key guys. Like, LA's not moving Byfield. Anaheim's not moving Zegras. So let's try to work something else out. Give us a call if you got an idea. That's kind of where those clubs are at. Um, you know, Vegas is an interesting one because they can get creative with the cap in terms of how they're going to package something together. Alex Tuck, someone Buffalo likes. Um, but, you know, they're not going to... I mean, why would Buffalo take on Marc-Andre Fleury just to make money work? Like, it doesn't... Like, that aspect of it, to me, doesn't make much sense. Uh, I don't think it make much makes much much sense for Buffalo either, and you know Flower would have to sign off on it because they're not on his list. So uh, I just I just don't see that aspect of it happening. But we're probably looking at something here from Eichel's perspective. The twenty second, twenty third is is my guess. Uh, right after the expansion draft, when things open up again, the transaction freeze wraps, and you're looking at the first round. So somewhere around there is probably where we're going to see something if it's prospect draft heavy in terms of a return. If not, they can wait a little bit, but I think they'd like some finality with this at the end of the month, and just draft time just makes a lot of sense. Dave, would, would it make sense for them to make more of a move now, considering that Jack Eichel has that no movement clause that kicks in in about a year? Because Kevin Adams' is back is really kind of against the wall with that deadline. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't see a scenario where he's on the team next season, so... Uh, you know, regardless, I, I think something is happening this summer. Um, it, it makes more sense to me if it's happening at the draft or right around it. I mean, it, look, we can a team may say, "All right, the hell with this. Let's just get this over with, and we'll give you what you want and make it happen." They may could happen this week. Um, I'd be surprised, but you kind of have to preface that, but because you never know, I'm not the one making the trades. Uh, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, but certainly, I would I would suspect if something is going to happen, you're probably looking at 22nd, 23rd, in and around that if it's involving, you know, some first round picks because there are teams that are willing to move them. Anaheim's willing to move their first round pick, LA as well, um, you know. So if that comes into play, then perhaps Columbus is to a certain extent willing to move theirs, uh, and they've got the two extra first rounders towards the end of the draft. Uh, but you know, everything has to make sense also from a dollar perspective. Is Jack Eichel the most coveted uh, trade chip that we've had? I, I, I can't even remember the last one. Maybe Rick Nash? Um, in, in how long? I'm trying to think. Anybody? <laughs> Can you think of a name? Um, that's good. I'm try, yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good question. I mean, hey, Eric Carlson, maybe? Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, Pronger, sort of, if we want to go back a little bit, um, just because of what he – like his impact to a team. Um, yeah, th this type of player doesn't move very often. And you're right. I mean, like this is, uh, I'm trying to think of guys that would fall into that category at this age. We just don't see it that often. Um, it, it, and that's why it's such a difficult move for Buffalo because you can't screw it up. <laughs> like you can't just say, all right, the hell with this. I'll, we'll make the moves and, you know, we'll worry about the stuff later because they also have Sam Reinhardt to figure out. They also have Rasmus Ristolainen. Like, there's a bunch. They don't have a goalie. Allmark's testing the market unless they're going to completely overpay him. So, you know, they, they've got a bunch of holes they got to figure out. And, you know, 
it depends what route they want to take, if, you know, and, and what the offer is. So, yeah, there's a bunch of prospects and futures that are going to be involved, but there's also going to be an NHL piece because you have to, no one's just taking 10 million and saying, cool, we'll move on. Uh, you know, so that's the other element to, to this that plays a factor and how this affects the deals and everything. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, the, the, there's ties to Calgary and Sean Monaghan and swapping that out and make, makes it easier from a money perspective. Um, but does Buffalo want to, do, I mean, if you're getting that caliber player, then you're escalating your your rebuild if, if that's what you're going through right now. And then how does that affect Sam? And how does that affect Rasmus Ristolainen and some of the other guys on the team and all of that? So, and, and, oh, by the way, expansion draft, they're trying to, you know, move a poso over there. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, they've, they've tried and had that conversation with Seattle. So there's so many dominoes in Buffalo. Um, I, I don't envy those guys right now in trying to maneuver – uh, this, this, I mean, these next few weeks are going to be ridiculously tough for Kevin Adams. So, uh, if he likes gray hair, he's going to get some. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the expansion draft. When you talk about Seattle, um, when Vegas came to the league, they got Mark Andre Fleury, you know, very, very good goaltender at a Stanley Cup. Um, yeah. Do something similar with, uh, you know, LA is, I'm sure, going to protect Peterson over Quick. Do you think Seattle would have any interest in taking Jonathan Quick, a veteran presence? Who has a cup? I mean, his his game has fell off the last couple of years, but do you see that being a possible option for them? No, I don't. Um, to be perfectly honest, I, I mean, Quick will be exposed, but I, I just don't see a scenario where you know Seattle takes him unless it's a, a tricky situation. Unless you're getting another team that's interested in him but wants a lower cap hit, so you then you got to work out another deal with Seattle to say, okay, you select this guy. We'll give you X to offset it. You retain some of the money, and then we do a separate deal, and you send them over here to finalize the trade. Like those are some things that could be discussed. Like if Matt Dumba is available, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 exposed, then we could see a scenario where some teams are saying, "Okay, we'll trade you some other pieces. You've got it'll offset money wise." Like these kinds of conversations are going to happen, um, but they're ridiculously tricky. Uh, I don't think Quick will be picked up. Braden Holpe's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a possibility there. Jake Allen out of Montreal, uh, another one. Uh, I believe they will have a discussion with with Drieger uh, to see if they can work something out from a free agency perspective. This one, this free agency stuff for me is a little tricky. Um, it's kind of unfair a little bit. I understand you can utilize that pick, and if you agree, let, we'll use Drieger as, as, as the example. Uh, Okay, we're going to agree to a contract. We'll pick you. That's our pick. Uh, but if you're talking to other free agents and you don't pick them, what's stopping Seattle from going after them on July 28th afterwards? Pick, t- so you're almost taking two players away from a team. So that's been brought up. I mean, it's it's kind of a gentleman's agreement kind of thing, you know, to, to not screw the rest of the league over. Um, <laughs> but it's a ruthless business sometimes. That's true. Yeah. Speaking of which, Dave, are there any type of deals that you could possibly see out there, kind of like how Vegas did with Florida, with March or so, and, and Smith, possibly? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see a couple of those. I don't think we'll see as many to that extent. Like, you know, Shea Theodore went to went to Vegas from Anaheim because they wanted them to pick, um, and I always forget the dude's name, um, Another defenseman who, whose career was done, but his, he had a big cap hit, so they were alleviating money. Uh, that's going to bother me, so it'll probably come to me when this is Yeah, I'm trying to think of it, too. Yeah, yeah. whoever that dude was. Um, <laughs> so I, I could see, you know, you can see certain things happening there. Um, I, I think Minnesota's, in, like, they've got to figure something out because they're, they're going to lose a pretty good player if, if they don't uh, work out some kind of arrangement with, even with the buyouts to, to Suter and, and Parise. There, I mean, you're losing. You're probably exposing one of your key defensemen. So they got to figure out something there. Susie or, or Dumba, like one of those guys is getting exposed. So because I don't see them protecting 4D, um, or you know, so because of what they have up front. So someone's getting exposed, and and that's a good opportunity for Seattle to pick a pretty good defenseman. Um, but you know, who's to say that Billy Guerin's not working the wire to, to try to make sure that doesn't happen? So I think we'll see those kinds of deals happen. Probably, I don't know, maybe three, maybe if we're over undering it. Um, 
Dave, I think but, I got the game for you. Uh, one of our commenters, uh, Ariana, said it was Clayton Stoner. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Good call. Thank you, because that was going to bother the hell out of me. What a name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I also I got a question that a couple of our guys are also saying. Um, yeah. There's a lot of rumors about Pavel Buchnevich, and I've been beating the drum all along that his contract situation is going to get him moved out of town. Oops, I clicked the wrong one. Um, yeah. But uh, so what's what exactly is the trade market on him? Yeah, I mean, they 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 want to keep him. Um, you know, they they they'd like to make something fit there and work. I, I um, I believe he's our bench eligible. I think I have to double check that. But if he is, then it certainly makes things a little trickier. Um, and 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 the it speeds up the the need to potentially move him out if you can't get an extension done. Uh, with him, and that's why, like all this talk about Jack Eichel and the Rangers, or you know Seth Jones, or somebody that's high priced, it works now. You know, but you have him if you're going to keep him around. You have Zubinijad that you got to sign. That, quite frankly, for me, makes more sense than keep than, than acquiring Jack Eichel because you've got a guy that loves it there, is great with his teammates, he's great in the marketplace. It'd be great to have Jack Eichel as well. I really like Mika, so. Um, you know, you have all these future things that you got to figure out. Adam Fox, pretty sure the dude's going to cash in soon. So, like, <laughs> all of these guys are going to be factored in. And that's where, you know, the Bushnevich thing comes into play a little bit as well. Um, you know, what, how, what's his deal going to look like and how is it going to affect some of the other assets, you know, that are, that are going to be there. So, um, it's, been, it's been loose to this point. I don't think it affects expansion draft or anything like that. Um, there's absolutely, you know, 31 other teams that would love to get the guy. Uh, but we'll see, you know, kind of what happens there. Um, uh, nothing is imminent. It, sorry, this is a really long way of me saying nothing's like about to happen just yet. Uh, but to give you a little background and backstory on, on hit that situation and the Rangers in general, um, they want to keep them. They got to figure out if they can make the money work. If not, then they will probably, you know, try to finagle some type of move. Um, and I, I'm, this is going to, again, this is another thing that's going to bother me right now. So I'm going to double check <laughs> to make sure that he isn't ar arbitration eligible. Probably. And he is. Yes. So, okay. So that, and that, that's what may escalate things if they, if they don't know between now and I would imagine uh, uh, two weeks from now. So the 28th, as I look at the calendar, um, you know, where, where they're at. Now, Dave, before, before we uh, let you go, I want to grind the gears of my Ranger fans over here and uh, end on the Isle <laughs> question. But um, what's uh, Kyle Palmieri no. and Casey Sezikis, uh, two unrestricted free agents? I know Palmieri had said, uh, well, Lou Lamorello said in his end of media conference that Palmieri expressed interest in returning. No. Um, what are the chances are of them returning? Is, is Palmieri a, you know, a backup plan to Tarasenko or vice versa? Because I can't imagine they can't get all three of these guys back. Um, yeah, well, I mean, look, the, the, so the Islanders, um, they, they've got some cap issues that they got to figure out. Uh, you know, yeah, they're going to get an extra six million bucks of LTIR space when, you know, the season starts because you've got uh, Boychuk that'll be put on LTIR his final year. So they could utilize that if they need to or when they need to. Uh, they're trying to move Komarov. They're trying to move Hickey. You know, final year of their deals. They're trying to move Nick Letty. And even Everly, uh, to a certain extent, also out there. So they can try to make the money work. Um, I think Casey's saying I, I would be very surprised if they don't make that work. Um, Palmieri definitely would like to stay. Uh, I mean, I can see this waiting until the start of free agency to see what other options mm. might be out there. But, you know, my understanding is, is he definitely is open to staying. He's open to short. He's open to long term. You know, long term may offset the money in terms of AAV, so it may lower the cap hit. Just you know, how much longer do you want to go there? Um, but I can certainly see a scenario where I, I mean, I, I would be very surprised if if Sizikas is not signed. Uh, Palmieri, I think there's a really good chance he sticks around, and I don't believe that him sticking around affects them making another addition to their top six. So okay, it, it'll they'll, they'll be a deep team. Uh, and they want to contend. They know their window is wide open right now, so they they want to figure some stuff out. I know there's some you know Varlamov talk that's that's yeah. jumping around a little bit. There are a couple teams that have have poked around. Um, I don't think anything's imminent there just yet, uh, and and it may not be. But I think they're looking at other other ways to free up some money. And and you know Staple came out with with 
the, the stuff on on Letty. Um, but you'll probably hear a little bit about Everly as well. And he, he's got a full no trade, by the way. That changes to his 16-team trade list on the 28th. Um, so they might be getting ahead of things a little bit. Um, but uh, you got to do your due diligence and lose one of the best. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for jumping on with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, hopefully, absolutely. hopefully this summer, you know, for every hockey fan, having a lot of moves, it's like it's like Christmas Day. So hopefully this uh, also goes <laughs> up to the hype here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's it's starting on a good note, you know, so far. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we get some more activity going on. All right. Is thanks a lot. Be like the busiest week for you, by the way. <laughs> the, these these next two to three weeks are going to be bananas. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to uh, Seattle for the expansion draft. So there's there's that element. They're doing a small event there. I'm doing some stuff. Uh, Sirius XM NHL Network Radio will be doing Dennis Bernstein and I, uh, an expansion draft show from there. So we've got that. And then, so the expansion draft and all these trades this week and then the draft and all the stuff leading up to, yeah, this is, this is, I'm on team no sleep for the next, you know, 20 <laughs> days or so. Yeah. <laughs> Next yeah, time yeah. I hear, yeah. yeah. Next time I hear at four a.m., it'll be live. So that'll be good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the Red Bulls are going to come in handy. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, awesome. Dave, thank you. Thanks, really guys. Appreciate it. it very much, Dave. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Right, these are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.